All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the eBay shop. My name's Corey. I'm Teresa. And we are Grams and Pops Vintage. And if you watched our last video, we talked a little bit about getting our store healthy again. We've been we, doing inventory. We were sick. The store was sick. S-I-C. Spoiler alert, <laughs> store is still sick. But we are working on it. We got through one whole row over here of inventory. Who did? Well, I did inventory Teresa listed, so it was a team effort. But the sad piece is, is I have so many drafts that I am almost at the verge. Yep. Right at the, the peak of what you can yep. draft. Yep. So, and we did break 4,000 items in the store since our last video. So we, we actually did delist and sell similar on everything in the totes that we inventoried. And I think we discussed that in the last video, but we found out something on our journey to figure out how to get our store healthy again. We actually found some other bad news. We did. But we're going to talk about that. We're just not going to give you all the deets yet. We will. Stay tuned. We're going to give you all, the, we're going to spill all the beans. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. Spill the beans. We're going to spill everything and you guys get to watch. So yeah, you get the deets. Yeah. But first we do have a few video, a few videos. We have a few items <laughs> going out today. So what's the first one? We had a good weekend. We did have a good weekend. The first item going out is some Oneida silverware. These are new in the package. Like I got them. The guy said he got them as a wedding present and they never used them. And I paid 20 bucks for the whole entire lot. And I've already sold one set of them. They're kind of noisy. So I'll show them here. They're, they're forks. Yep. They are Oneida Morning Blossom Burnished Stainless Steel Dinner Forks. Yep. They have a little flower pattern thing there. They're nice forks and yeah, new in package. So what'd those sell for? $52.99. The next item I picked up, um, I think I got these from the, the Encore in town. They're Sperry. They're Sperry Women's Top Cider Fresh Fish. Cider? Top Cider? Top Cider. Like mm -hmm. S-I-D-E-R. I wouldn't man recommend drinking them, but. No, not that kind of cider. S-I-D-E-R. Oh. Like side. You're oh. going to side with me? Not today. Top <laughs> Cider Fresh Fish Core Gray Boat Shoes. Fresh Fish? And cider. This sounds like a lunch special. <laughs> They're these. They're gray shoes. <laughs> they are. I paid five bucks for those at yep. the local thrift store. And they're really small. They're a small size. They're size nine. That's not small. They look small. That's not much below my shoe size. Mm, I wear yeah. 10. Well, size doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't. But those hold for $54.99. All right. Back for another sticker feature. Let's go mm. see who we got. Let's go. Who's that one? That's that Wolfman. Wolfman's goodies. That is Chad. Chad makes me giggle. I watch his video every single day because he records one every day and yeah. tells us about what he shipped. And he tells us dad jokes. He does. He, he's actually pretty funny to watch. I don't mind watching him. I usually have him on in the background when he's live, but Graham likes to hop in the chat and chat a little bit. So I do. Wolfman goodies on YouTube. Go check him out. All right, so when we were looking into our store health a little bit, we actually decided to also dig into our reports in eBay. It's something we never have looked into very closely. I mean, we do. I, we look at, you know, your 90-day total, your... Just the summary reports, more Yes, or less. the ones on the front page. Yep. So we got in and what we were more concerned about is like our service metrics type stuff. That's the kind of stuff we wanted to see, you know, how healthy does eBay see our store and when we got to digging, we actually found something that was a little bit concerning. Yes, we have low service metric. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> All right, so when we started digging into whether or not our store was actually healthy, yep. one of the things we wanted to know is not only do we think it's healthy based on are we making enough money, are we making enough sales, are our items not sitting forever, the stuff that we have direct control over, mm -hmm. we also wanted to see what eBay thought as far as how healthy our store is. And that kind of starts by digging into the reports a little bit. Yep. And there's there's lots of different places to see the reports. But the only one we ever pay attention to, well, the only one I ever pay attention to, is the one on the page overview. The summary stuff. Yes. It yep. tells you your conversion. It tells you... What's the other thing? Well, it, it kind of tells you your conversion. It tells you what you're spending on ads and what yep. your return on ad spend is. Yep. Things like that. And your sales amount. Yep. That's what I look at. So we never dug in much deeper than that no. really. We never had a reason to, but since we're doing this, we decided to go ahead and dig deeper and see if we could look at all the reports eBay had to offer and just see if there was any indication that our store might not be as healthy as it could be. So 
As we start digging in, I know that it wasn't just random that our store was sick, so you decided to start digging in. No. Where did you, where, what prompted this whole thing? I was actually watching the product, or is it the Product Playbook podcast? Profit Playbook. Profit Playbook. See, I don't even know what I was <laughs> I watching. don't even watch it, and I, I know. I know it's John from Flippin' Ain't Easy and Josh Galt, and it's Scott Bearded Picker over there, and I watch their podcast every once in a while because when they, when they do dive into a serious topic, they tend to deep dive and get a little analytical, and that's kind of... That's his wheelhouse. Yeah, that's kind of the stuff I love. But this one they did, it wasn't just the three of them. Didn't they have the guy from eBay on? Yeah, they actually they actually did have a former director of something at eBay. And he <laughs> was, know. he's eBay UK, but eBay as a whole, it, it doesn't matter. He still was a former employer, employer of employee. eBay. Employee, not an employer. <laughs> and he had some really interesting insights as far as different ways to look at things mm -hmm. from eBay's point of view rather than our point of view, which, which actually got us really thinking. And they also talked a little bit about store health and metrics and stuff like that. So we started digging and kind of did our own deep dive. Mm -hmm. So you, sh you should link that down below. Can you link their podcast? We'll down yeah, below? we'll link the podcast. It was worth watching. I would recommend you go watch it because it was a, it was a really good show and it's nice to see somebody from eBay being that, and he doesn't work there anymore, but it's nice to see somebody from eBay actually being that open and honest and upfront about what eBay is looking for. And it was kind of surprising, like they're not the big villains that sometimes we think they are. So we'll get a little bit more into our store in specific here, mm -hmm. but what actually sold next? So we sold some car mats. We sold some genuine OEM Subaru Legacy black carpet floor mats. They're from 2015 to 2019. Yep. Nothing special to look at there. They're floor mats. Yeah, I think that's the one that I got two sets from. This one was like, they were in great, almost new condition. Yep. And then I got another set, I think, that were like, they Dirty need some and cleaning. Clean and I, I don't know if I want to clean them. So Were those the Dodge Ram floor mats? No. They were dirty? Or no, they're another pair of, of Subaru these. Legacy. So we got some truck mats that were a little dirty too. Yeah, but, I got some brown ones. I got some, yeah, some Dodge Ram ones, two Dodge Ram ones. Usually when we're looking for these, we're looking for ones that people take out, right, when they buy their cars, so they yep. put the WeatherTech mats or something in. But these, the OEM, the factory mats, they do sell pretty well and pretty regularly. I've had good luck with yeah, them. Like, really I luck. think I only have like two or three sets left. Two of them are the Dodge ones because they're yeah. pickup and not, I mean, most people don't put the, leave the carpet stuff in their pickups if they're farmers or whatnot because they're putting in the the weather tech ones but this is just a basic car yeah <laughs> but we have I, I think we've sold probably 10 or 12 of the sets of floor mats like we've yep. done really well with them so i think this one was like five bucks and it sold for 34 dollars 99 all right so in like i said in our process of doing inventory of all of our totes we did do a price adjustment we did do an end and sell similar on everything in this first row and some of those items have actually sold already. It is. This is one of them. This is one of them. I picked this up at the Goodwill because it was so cute. And I looked it up and it's like $50 is what it sells for. Yep. It's a, okay. it's a Mary's Little Lamb. Yep. It sat for a while, but it is actually from England, if I remember correct. It's not no, actually, New Zealand. It's not actually yeah. Mary's Little Lamb. Yep. This is a different lamb from a whole different herd. Yep. It is Robin Rive. Country Life New Zealand Sheep Lamb. Yep. In so a cute little dress. That's her tiny little plush. This is like a six inch plush. I think you were right. I think that was the smallest one in your tote you inventory. Yeah. <laughs> Tiniest little plush. And, and that one sold for how much? $46.49. So, yay. I still would not recommend picking up plush. Some plush are really good, but they do tend to move slow. Like all the decent plush that sold for $40, $50 for us have taken over a year to sell. Yeah, because we sold that Commonwealth dog yep. and he sat for a year and we sold him for 50 bucks. And the plush take up a tote really fast. Like this is tiny. <laughs> I'd buy a bunch of these. But, but... I can shove a lot, of t a lot of plush in there because it doesn't hurt them to and be squished. And they are simple to ship. So they do have pros and cons. Yeah, you got to decide. Ship drop in a four by eight by six bucks. If you have a ton of room and you don't mind having an entire tote taken up by like three plush. Plush can be good. We do have that one giant sea turtle. Well, the, not just the sea turtle. We have a big, like, unicorn llama in one of them that takes up a whole tote. I think that one might have to just go bye-bye after this next yeah. round or whatever, because that's, like, one that you win at a fair. So. Yeah, it was, it was not one that we should have picked up. 
I think I we think actually we got did. it in a lot. We did. Remember that lot that you negotiated with that we paid yep. like 20 bucks for all those, including the snake? Yep. And we did <laughs> sell some of those. There's We've a sold fly. a lot of them. This fly is driving me crazy today. It's probably one of those striped wing flies. All right. So the reports that we looked at, that when we got to digging in, we looked at all the reports, but the ones that actually held some interest to us were the service metric reports. And those are under performance service metrics. And when we got there, I've been in that report before, but it always just shows you the big graph of items not as described. Where are you at compared to your peers as far as items not described? Yep. And there's there's like a line on it that says you're, what is it, good, Yeah, green, fair. green yellow, orange, and red, basically. And it shows you where you are in in comparison to other stores your size. Yep. And other people who are selling the same stuff you're selling, yep. which we're an everything seller, so... We're equal to everybody out there. Yeah. <laughs> but on that thing... Except we're not. <laughs> <laughs> on that thing, there's two sections. There's a item not as described. The second section I didn't even know was there. If you look at the top of that graph, there's a link to switch to a different graph, which is a different metric. Yep. So the item not as described, when you look at that for our store, we are A-OK. -okay because... Yep. I mean, I, I'm very meticulous about the crap that I do on there. So I try and give all the details so that we don't end up with an item not We get described. very few of those ever out of all of our sales. We've had I very few. I think, well, that, that metric that we looked at was for the last, oh, what was it? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's just their last period. So for the last month or so is like what it, it shows. Is. But you could switch it to look at different periods. Yep. yep. And then on the other section, so if you look, it's right here. And then there's another little What's thing. What's right here mean? <laughs> it's at the <laughs> at top the of top. the graph. There's one right here at the top that says item not as described. But right next to it, there's another one that says item not received. Yep. And if you're and not paying attention, you'll actually miss it because it doesn't look like a link. It just looks no. like the words. Yep. But it, it is in there. I'll put a picture of it up here so you can kind of see it. But that one that we one so great in. We're in the orange. Yeah, we're which is not good. Second to the but highest. I have to say, we have five item not received out of like 700 and some sales, right under 800 sales. So to me, five out of 800, that just doesn't it's seem still, horrible. It still puts us in the orange category. And we actually have one that's going to be added to it next quarter. For, for and, it, and it shows you're projected for the next round. And it's actually going to go up some more yet which some of them should drop off because what what happened was we started discussing it last night and so i went in to go look at it and i was able to download a report yeah it sounds horrible that we have that many items not received that we're not sending products out that's not actually the case here no it's actually so when we downloaded the excel report that you can download from there there are five cases on there um the first one was a barbie doll um, <laughs> the first one was a Barbie doll. It was, we refunded it early in the morning, the day we told them we, we had to resolve it. Yeah, the post office completely lost it and it was off the grid, like not it, showing tracking anymore. And we were one day from eBay doing the autumn, like eBay was gonna have to step in and refund. Yep. And we wanted to avoid that. So we went ahead and refunded the thing. Two hours later, it was delivered to the person. Yep, and, and we didn't fight it, we just said, it's a Barbie doll. It's not that big of a deal. It nope. wasn't a high dollar one. Nope. We just let that go. And we let her keep, let him or her keep it and gave him the refund yep. and just said whatever. Now, the other ones are no less frustrating, though, because the second one was like a pewter plate. It was in Cocky one of our air. it was in one of our videos. <laughs> it was in the red box and it had a little water stain on the front of the box. That one, the post office completely lost. It never showed up. Yep, they did. They lost it, and I filed a missing mail lost package claim with USPS, and they refunded it right away. Like, they knew. Somebody's getting that thing in one of those missing mail packages. <laughs> yep, they actually admitted to losing it, and it was the post office yep. fault, and they refunded us. The post office actually refunded us for missing that, and yep. we refunded the customer. Yep. So it was all taken care of as far as we were concerned. We handled it. We did the best that we could with it. Yep. The next one. The was next one was three, three items. It hit us for three items, even though it was one order yep. with three items on it. Yep. Also lost by the post office. Yep. And that one, we did the same thing. Um, I'm glad they ordered three patches, though, on that order because I didn't, because the dollar amount was over $20, I couldn't send it via 
eBay standard envelope. Yeah, that thing. Um, so I upgraded it to Ground Advantage and shipped it out that way. So I was able to file a claim for it, and they paid that one out right away. Yep. So we got hit with four of them that are on there that aren't even my fault. Well, and really none of them are our fault. I mean, the post office is to blame in every one of these situations yep. and customers were refunded. Things were handled right. The fifth one was was actually what? Recent. The, the one that's coming up? Yep. That was that Tennessee Oilers jacket oh, that we sold. God. That really cool vintage Proline Tennessee Oilers one. Yep. That one I was like... I think I was like on pins and needles for two weeks. Yeah, I it was a two hundred and fifty dollar jacket, so that one hurt us. Like we didn't we didn't like that one, but more than the money, it was such an, a rare item that we'd never seen. It was mm -hmm. such a cool item. It made me sick to think that it was just going to go into a lost and found at a post office somewhere. And some and somebody would get it and resell it because yeah. you know they're it's going to go in a lost mail package. Somebody's going to buy that lost mail package. But again, this one. It got lost right when the customer said, hey, it's not showing up. We went out and started tracking it. It didn't show any received scan nope. or anything, even though it was on our scan sheet. Yep. Now, that one, we we filed the, we waited the mm -hmm. time it took to allow us to file a lost package claim, and yep. we did that. And the customer was very understanding with yes. us. He worked with us the whole time. And our post office. I have to give a huge shout out to our post office, because our not our postmaster, but the post office manager, I don't Staff. know who it is. Yeah. She was really good and she was really interested in how come this package didn't show up on any scans either. So she went into their system and she found our scan sheet yep. and found all the tracking numbers that were attached to that scan sheet. And it was on there. And showing that it was actually got an arrival scan. It just didn't show up in USPS's system. Yep. So we had all the proof we needed yep. to go into the post office and file a claim to get our money back on the jacket. So the money wasn't that big of an issue, but uh, the customer did contact eBay and they told him to open up uh, an item not as, not or an received. item not received. So he did. And then like two days later, the item showed back up with a tracking scan yep. and it was actually like three hours from him. So right before he got his money back, he actually got the item and that was canceled out. But because the claim was filed yep. and That's the post office just completely ghosted the package somehow for 14 days... That one dings us too. Yep. Which is sad because I didn't lose it. So we're completely, like none of those things were in our control. The post office has basically sabotaged our eBay account. They have us, oh, they have our hands tied. They, they have more than our hands tied. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's to the point now where it's actually going to start affecting our account in, in real world ways where our income is going to be directly affected by it. And there's nothing we can do about it. Like, we can't physically take the package and go hand deliver them all. No. And what's your option? Just switch and shoot UPS? But UPS has mess ups too. No, and the, I don't know. I mean, you could move everything to priority mail, but you're not going to sell as much because priority mail is more expensive. Yeah. So we do have a real problem with our account health, and it's 100% in the hands of the post office and eBay. And eBay. And. Right now, there's not a lot we could do about it. We did take some steps, and we'll talk about that, but let's look at a few more items that sold. We sold something Corey picked up. That makes it sound so horrible. <laughs> like I never pick things up. <laughs> we were in our local Encore, which is like our local thrift store, and Corey comes over, and he's like, what do you think about these? And I'm like, I suppose, you know, they were seven, eight bucks when you figure in all of the, whatever we paid yep. for them. So, but this is actually a men's Patagonia full zip, better sweater in the color blue. In a size large. Yep. So we got two of these, one in a large, one extra large. Yep. And they're in really good shape. Yep. We had to clean them up a little bit, but they were in really good shape. I still see. Come here. I'm see your hair? Yes. Like, I use the crap out of lint rollers. And I have one jacket I don't know if I'm going to list because there's just so much dog and cat hair on it. And I've washed it. But yeah. so he came over. We looked him up. I didn't know if they would sell. We don't get a hold of a lot of Patagonia. Not here. No. So you never know. But they did. They sold, well, at least this one, and it made us whole on both of them. So we're in the yep. profit. And it sold for $49.99 plus shipping. Speaking of lint rollers, you got a new tool, didn't you? I did. <laughs> She's so pretty excited, excited about it. It is the coolest thing ever. I mean, I remember having one as a kid. 
and in high school. But it is a lint remover, but it's a, a rechargeable lint remover. It's and like so, a sweater shaver. Yeah, that that's what that's what I would call it. So I messaged in our little group the other day that we have, and I'm like, guess what I'm doing tonight? I'm shaving my sweater, <laughs> my sweater. So it is. It's just like a little plug-in thing, and you use it on your shirt, and it pulls off yeah. all the little fuzzy balls. The fuzzy balls. It gets all the dingleberries <laughs> off your sweaters. Yes. And it works on blankets, we found out. Yep. So I did one sweatshirt. I wish I had a before and an after of that Green Bay Packers sweatshirt. Yeah. Because it looked really bad. And then it I actually, did it and it looks brand new. Yeah. It, it actually brings the color back. Like it yep. brings, it makes the colors pop again and stuff. It takes all the dull fuzzies off of it. And it it works better. Usually when we order something from Amazon, we're like, eh, is it going to work? Is, yeah. it, is it a waste of money? This one actually... Like, I think we're going to use it a lot. We've already used it a yeah, lot. Yeah, because I did, I did it on that sweater, that sweatshirt. The other one I did it on was I got a hold of a vintage Rugrats blanket throw, whatever you want to call it. And it had all those fuzzies on it, too. And so I started doing it on it. And it just makes it so much more vibrant. There's not as many little gray, white specks on it. So it looks dingy and whatever. So I'm 90% done with the front of it. And then I got to do the back of it. Yep. So, and we actually do have that in our Amazon store if you're interested in looking yep. at it. It was really inexpensive. I think it was yep. like 15 bucks or I something. I think so. So that one actually saved a few pieces that we probably wouldn't have got as much out of because nope. it really turned them back to brand new. Yep. And now I will use that on most of my jackets and shirts that have those little fuzzy balls on them. All right. What else you got? The next item, I was super shocked when this sold. Like I picked this up. I got a whole little like butter bowl of tie clips and cufflinks and tie pins and there was a a high school ring in there that was gold or silver but this is a gold tone sailboat nautical oh i got gold tone in there twice man i suck tie tack pin i don't even know how to show this it's really tiny it's a <laughs> it sailboat is. it's just a little itty bitty sailboat yep but i listed it and it sold within like 10 minutes. Yeah, it sold. Right while she was at the desk listing other ones, this one popped off and sold. So what'd that sell for? $14.99, free shipping. All right, so after we looked up the store metrics and we saw what the items were and what the problems were and, and kind of had a little bit of a temper tantrum about the fact that it's not our fault. Yep. And I don't know if it was a little temper tantrum, but... Yeah, I wasn't very happy about it. I was kind of upset that eBay was essentially penalizing us yep. for something that we couldn't control at all. Correct. So we decided to go ahead and call eBay and take some steps to see what they could do about it and at least get their take on it and see what they were going to say. Yep. So I got on the phone. I requested a callback this morning and I get Jackie. Yep. From UK, England. I don't know where she was from, but mm -hmm. she was very, very nice on the phone and I was explaining it to her. And at first she went in and looked at seller performance and she was like, there's no, there's no dings on your account. Like there's nothing counted against you. You have a hundred percent shipping, you know, rate. There's no return issues, whatever. And I'm like, okay, but I'm not looking at seller performance. I'm looking at service metrics. And so she went in and she, she finally found the same spreadsheet I was able to download and she's looking at it and she's trying to figure out what she can do to fix it. And she's totally flabbergasted on not being able to do anything. So she took a minute. She said, I'll email you. And that was the end of that. Yep. She had to, she said she'd email or call us back. She was going to deep dive into our account. And she was going to go talk to somebody else. And she did that. And when she came back, the answer was basically, we can't do anything about these, but don't worry about it. Yep. Because nothing in here counts against you. This is just for your own, so you can see how you're doing. Yep. Against, against your peers. Which I'm listening to her tell Teresa this on the phone. At the same time, I'm clicking the learn more button next to that metric. <laughs> and it's actually telling you that if you hit certain levels, how, how eBay is going to penalize or punish your account, basically. And, and one of the things is if you have next business day shipping or three to five day shipping lead times, there you can have that, but they're going to show the customer maybe you have three to five day shipping and 14 day lead times. They're going to adjust what your customer sees for your lead times to prevent things coming back. And and it listed two or three other things too. Like that holding they would your do. money. Yeah, they, they would hold the amount of the purchase out of your account, not pay you out until the, until the things are actually received. received and they know the customer got it. Or they could hold that refund amount, which is basically the amount of the mm -hmm. money. 
So they, they actually listed off some punitive things they would do if you reached a certain level, which were very close to that level. So while while Jackie is saying one thing, <laughs> eBay's policy page is telling me another thing. So I was already not very happy about it. I'm, I'm not very happy about it. So I think, I don't know what, I don't know 100% what the next step is, but I think for me, I think it might be reaching out to eBay on Facebook and sending them the actual screenshots of what we're seeing and having them explain it to me because she did. She went in and she called back instead of emailing because she said, my brain isn't functioning and I don't think I can comprehend this or put this into an email right. So I figured I would call you back, which I was glad she called back. Um, but I think it might be, you know, showing what we're seeing from the screenshots to eBay and telling them explain this because this person is telling me this doesn't mean anything, but your website itself is telling us that this means everything. Yeah, it's not it's not good. I mean, it's, it's definitely a health metric for your store mm -hmm. or for your account. And it has punitive actions listed that they're gonna take if you hit a certain level, which we're getting close to. And none of that is under our control. Like literally we can't change no. anything. Well, and she said the way she explained it was the, the cases that are listed on that service metric one, you know, they can't touch those. They don't, they don't do anything with them unless you happen to be in a place like that had the hurricane where you lost all of your inventory, you know, you can't ship your stuff and all of this. Um, then eBay would go in and fix that if all of your customers ended up going in and opening so up they a have, lot of receipts. That just tells me they have the ability, they just don't have the policies in place to allow them to do it unless yep. certain things are met. Yep. I would think the post office being incompetent would would reach that threshold. I, I would, I don't know what to do. I understand from one perspective, that's a bad customer experience. It is. And I feel bad for that. I wish there was something we could do. And if there is something we could do, we'll do it. But at the same time, once we hand something over to the, the United States post office, what are- It's out of our hands. I'm like not going to, I, I can't go walk with them to every location to see- And there are things that we can do on that side once we hand it off. We can communicate with customers, which we do. Mm -hmm. We can make sure that if something doesn't show up in a timely manner and they're getting worried that we're communicating, which we do. I have been lately since the since the 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 jacket one. I have been scrolling through and just watching them and seeing to make sure that they're all delivered. And if they don't say delivered, a lot of those ones that aren't currently saying delivered are because they're international shipments. Yep. Sorry, Mo, we do sell international. <laughs> She's talking about Mo eighty one official. Eight, 80, Mo eighty seven official. Eighty seven official. She can't seem to sell anything international. No, nope. I think international doesn't like Mo. So, but yeah, I I do scroll through our sold listings to see that it says delivered and check it if it doesn't say delivered. The other ones that are hard to see that they say delivered are the ones that are patches with the eBay standard envelope. Yeah. Um, so we keep up on the ones that we can. Yep. And yep. and. I mean, the standard envelope ones, we could stop using those, but those haven't been the issue so far. No. Like not, we've, we've had... Yeah, knock, knock on, on wood. wood. <laughs> those have all delivered, so those haven't been... The ones that are actually insured and tracked mm -hmm. are the ones that have kind of just disappeared on us. So the steps we've taken is, one, we communicate with the customers. We do that always anyway. If yep. there's an issue, we're 100% willing to just refund it. We're not going to yep. take the hit from eBay. We will refund yep. it. And if we're doing that, and we're doing everything in our power as a good seller, eBay should probably reward that instead of punishing yep. it. And that's not the case. So I've got beef with the post office and I've got beef with eBay and they kind of lied to us. I don't think she lied to us on purpose. I think she just didn't know. I but don't, I don't think she, I don't think she actually knows. I think she just went and found some information and decided to come back and tell you that. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, Jackie. But listen, eBay, Jackie needs some more training. She needs more training because yep. the policy you gave her to read from isn't right. And that upsets me. <laughs> what do you do? What are you guys doing? If you get an item not received, you know, are you doing anything? Are you going through and checking, scrolling to see if everything's been delivered? Are you, what are you doing? Well, I know I've heard from other sellers who have had their packages just dis disappear. And, and usually I kind of looked at it as, 
yeah, well, you're having porch pick up and they're not scanning or you're just dumping them in a bucket at the post office instead of getting them <laughs> scanned and, and things like that. And I'm like, well, you have something you could do to fix them. So it's kind of your fault. Our post office kind of freaked out a little bit when we, because I, I didn't go off on them because I know it's not their fault. However, the customer did actually say in a message to us that he thought maybe somebody in our post office stole yeah. it. <laughs> so. But... I was always a little cynical hearing other resellers say this is happening to them, but they have those things in place like porch pickup yep. or dumping them in a bin or something like that. I'm a little more... The self-checkout. I'm a little more sympathetic to that now. Mm -hmm. Although if we were doing that, we would immediately change and we would start dropping them off and having them scanned. Yep, which we is would have them scan every do. single package was what they were freaking yep. out about when we told them if this is going to be the issue that USPS is losing our packages and no acceptance scan, that we were going to have them scan every single sheet instead, every single and, package. And unfortunately, that wouldn't work either because even if it shows an arrival scan, if it doesn't show up to the customer on time yep. and they open an item not received, it's a ding on your account, period. It doesn't matter what the reason is. Yep. And unless, of course, it was a hurricane and maybe you could talk to eBay about that and say, hey, this is, a, this is an affected area. Something like that. Short of that, even if you have the acceptance scan and a scan at every hub all the way to their house, except for the delivery scan, it's it's on you. It's counting against you. Yep. So that's that's kind of where we're at right now. We can't Which, do anything about it, but we also can't really ignore it because we're one step, literally like one more of these in a certain time period could put us into the step where eBay starts taking punitive action, which we don't want. Yep, this is my response to eBay. Do they have feelings? I don't know if they have feelings, but... <laughs> okay, let's talk about something else that's sold. We sold some cut and sew fabric. So when we went down to the bargains for UN92, I grabbed a whole box of these things. I love them and I love that people get them and they tell me in their reviews that they're so excited to create these items. Um, but this is a Spring Industries Angel Cat doll cut and sew cotton the cotton flannel not, whatever panel it's not much to look at it actually it'll turn out kind of like that yeah that's the picture we actually bought these thinking if they're not worth anything we'll lot them up we'll sell them yep. as a lot as far as rather than list them for four or five dollars a piece but yep. when we got to dig it in they actually they actually do have some value and they do sell yep. decent so we and sold quite a few of these. Yep, and I sell them for, we have another one that sold, which is a Halloween one, which I don't know if they're going to get it in time, depending on where they're at. But um, this one sold for $14.99 free shipping. I did free shipping just because it's it's simpler for these. You just drop them in Throw a poly, them poly and away they go. So Now we get to pray the post office actually delivers the damn thing. The next item, I went back and forth with I don't know how many sellers. This came in a lot that I had gotten on our proxy bid, along with... A fancy hat we're going to show you later um but it is a buffalo bills like winter pom-pom hat yep it's, pom -pom this, it's this guy here something. keep your ears warm at the game when it's snowing yep i had it listed for 24.99 the first offer i got from somebody because you know i took off all my my minimum offers don't don't ruin it don't ruin um, it i got I an offer better i got an offer for five bucks it hurt my feelings yep <laughs> but it finally sold for twenty dollars plus shipping. Yep. It's out the door. Yep. All right. So other problems with standing, we, we kind of got to the bottom of that one as far as we can. We can't do much about it. Nope. We're kind of just over the barrel on that one and we're at eBay's mercy. Yep. We may try to contact them again and show them that they are actually counting against us and they are going to be bad things and see if there's anything we can do, but I doubt it. I think we're kind of at the end of the road on that one. But other reports, we were actually looking into some other reports to see if there was anything useful that we could kind of glean out of those reports to help our store. What would be those reports? <laughs> this is apparently, this is not Teresa's forte. This is not mine. Like I said, I look at the basic crap on the front page. Well, <laughs> luckily for Teresa, there's not a lot in the reports. The reports are very useful if you're selling one item and you have 5,000 of that item. You can really dig in and use those reports for sell-through rate, for return on ad spend, and you can really tweak a lot of things you're doing if you have a lot of one item. If you're selling everything like we do, there's not a lot of the reports in eBay that are very useful. No, nope, and we can't go in and be tweakers when we tweakers? sell lots. <laughs> well, <laughs> according to our service I've been metrics, trying to figure out how to fit that in when you said we gotta go tweak our stuff. Great. <laughs> 
so now we have tweakers in our video. <laughs> According to our service metrics, we may as well just be tweakers. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> and I'll be doing all the videos by myself from here on out. <laughs> but a few pieces of the reports that are kind of useful that give you an idea of if you're doing the right things in your store is if you go under performance and you look at the traffic. Okay. So the traffic report will actually tell you if your impressions and your page views, they should almost look like a straight bar all okay, the way I'm, across. I'm going to ask a dumb question because none of this stuff means anything to me. What are impressions? Impressions means when your item gets shown to somebody. So if somebody sees it. Yep. That how just many times they, it's seen by somebody? <clears throat> yep. Okay, I got gotcha. it. And then page views means they actually clicked on it and they went and looked at your item. Okay, so impressions to page views. Yes, so there's there's those two graphs. They should look relatively straight across. If you have big dips or you big spikes in your page views or impressions, there's something going on. Most of the time with most resellers we talk to, that something going on means they list sporadically. Like if I list 50 items one day and then I wait two weeks and I list five items and then I wait two weeks and I list 10 items, your impressions and your page views are going to be up and down. So because we list daily, or 99% of the time daily. <laughs> we, li we list daily. Ours is pretty, like it's it's got some of this. But it's it's almost a straight across and yep. so is our page views. And, that, and that, that tells the story that we're consistent, we're always active, and they're always about the same area. Now, if that whole thing took a dip. We'd be saying... Holy crap. It, and we were still listing consistently and doing the same thing we're doing. Then something happened. Like something Corey bad is up. going on. Teresa got us another ding. How did, how did I get a ding? I don't know, but it's your fault until it's proven otherwise. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> those are the two reports we kind of look at just to make sure that if you got a penalty from, from eBay and they, mm -hmm. they slowed down your impressions or they're messing with the algorithm because you have bad metrics or something happened, that's one of the first places you'll probably see it is your page views or your impressions are going to mm -hmm. go down. Ours are still pretty steady across the board, even though we have tweaker metrics. And so, so far, we're okay. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. So that's that's kind of where we're at with that. I think our store is relatively healthy, but it's on the verge of being not. Yep. It, and th and that's what's frustrating is you see one thing, and when you eBay tells you you can look at that, but it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. You need to something. look at this because she did. She went in and she's like, "I'm looking at your entire seller performance. You have nothing to be worried about." That's exactly what she said. You have nothing to be worried about. Keep going. Your, your percentages are going to increase because it's coming up on, you know, Christmas season. People are going to be buying more. You're going to be having more sales. You're not going to have, I mean, you may have more returns, yeah. but. You have nothing to worry about as long as you don't click the link that says learn more. <laughs> because then it tells you all the things you need to worry about because your metrics suck. <laughs> sure. So, as of right now, we have none to worry about. But when this jacket hits. But when the jacket hits, I think the, the, um. The Cartier plate, Cartier plate. Fingers crossed. She said they'll start falling off. Fingers crossed, because we're we're right under the red zone right now. Yeah. And that's bad. And it's Corey's fault. But we have none to worry about because we got Jackie. Jackie's gonna help us. <laughs> Jackie, I wish I had. I wish Jackie had emailed me so I have Jackie's email to email back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna wrap this thing up, and that's what we're gonna do. What's the next item that sold? We sold some jeans. I was very iffy on these, but I bought them because they had $3 on them and they were brand new with the tags, but I've never sold this brand before. Shoot, I would have bought them just because they came with a belt. It does come with a belt. That's like a bonus, but I paid three bucks for these. They are Urban Pipeline, men's dark wash, premium slim, straight denim jeans. Urban Pipeline. Urban Pipeline. I, I okay. think I'll pick them up if they're in good condition going forward. Because they seem to sell pretty fast. I, it didn't take long for me to no. list those and for them to sell. So, um, But they sold for $29.99. Not bad. No. It's a good deal, too, because you're getting a belt. 
Yeah. Speaking of belts, we just put a big lot of like 37 or 39 belts on Shop Commons. Yep. So if you don't have a belt with the pants you bought, Ooh, go over to Shop Commons and grab some belts. There's some fancy ones. That reminds me, I left part of my stuff that I need to take pictures of at the office. All right, and the star of today's show. The star of today's show. Man, this one was a wild ride. It was. I was determined to get my asking price on this one, most, mostly because I knew the mm -hmm. item was good, but also because I really liked the item and I was okay with it staying here. But it was good because why? What do you, it, was, it was good because I picked it out. You did not! <laughs> I got this. So along with that Buffalo Bills thing, there was a whole bunch of Notre Dame Fighting Irish hats and shirts. Quit doing that. You're going to bruin it in this box that I got off Proxy Bid. I love Proxy Bid. Yep. Because I can go garage sailing online. So we found this top of the world vintage Fighting Irish Notre Dame hat. And it is a super cool hat. I, I really like this hat. But once we listed it, like within two hours of listing it, we were getting we had the offers turned off because we knew we wanted our asking price for it because it was unique and there was not another one out there nope. like it. It was the only one on eBay. But within hour, within a couple, an hour of listing it, we were getting messages from people saying, I'll give you 20 bucks. I'll pay right now. I'll give you the, 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 I'll give you 40 bucks, immediate payment. And I just kept messaging back saying, I'm sorry, but at this time we are not taking offers on this item. Yep, and we got a lot of emails. We had oh, a dozen God. emails the first day. Yep. With offers all the way up to like $60, $65. I think the max one I think we saw was 70 And we had it listed at $89. $89. Plus shipping. Yep. So after all that drama with people being low ballers. <laughs> they, they were trying. <laughs> they were trying to get that hat. It sold for full price of $89 even. And, and it, I'm still still sold within a, just a little over a week, maybe. I'm very upset with Corey, though. Why? Because we don't list up at zero dollars, like zero cents. It was 89 even. Yes. Apparently, I should have gone... It's either nine, 49 95 or 99 That's the ending of our numbers. Yeah. Only now everything's really screwed up. Are you saying it would have sold faster if I changed those I think two? so. I think it has sold more. I think it has sold faster for $88.99. Tweaker. <laughs> but now everything is seriously messed up in our stuff because as he went through and did what we normally don't do, which is end and sell similar, I, I he dropped the prices, prices on the stuff. So like that bear that sold, she sold for like dot twenty four cents. Uh, most of the items I dropped by like a dollar, unless it was something I wanted to be a little bit more aggressive on the price drop, and I did five percent. Mm. But the five percent is what gave us some really weird numbers. Mm. Not impressed. So anyway, that hat sold for our full asking price. Of $89. And he's getting a good and deal. And zero, zero cents. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bag that up and very carefully in a box, get that to its new owner. Yeah, I don't get to package the hats today. Corey informed me nope. he gets to package the hats I'm today. I'm going to package the hats today. That's on me. As well as everything that's bigger than a tie clip. I package stuff that's bigger than a tie clip. <laughs> you have three hats to package. And one thing of Department 56 that's got four items going to the same place. So I think we can all agree eBay is not the only problem I have that I can't do anything about. <laughs> all right. It's getting spicy in here. So we're going to get out of here. We're going to get to packing. We'll see you guys next time. Hasta la vista, baby.